Positive Charge PDX. We are a volunteer group that was begun in um, 2016 at the end of the year, and um, we decided we wanted to make a positive impact in our community by really focusing on positive things. And so we uh, have been through three major focuses making that impact through doing good deeds and sharing good news on our website or and our Facebook page, which is Positive Charge PDX, and then also by having um, building community through events that we have. Could you talk a little bit about some of the ways that you have created more positivity in the world, which is part of your mission? Oh, uh, yes, um, we'd be happy to, because um, one of the, in our activities, we always try to focus on doing something for others, and we find that that's when we all get a positive charge. So for example, one of the activities that um, we just participated in was pulling together backpacks for kids who are waiting with their families at the border. And we just all found that the support that we got through this or event was just beyond what we could have imagined, giving all of us a positive charge while we were giving away all of these really wonderful gifts that people were giving to us. Wow. Yeah. May I speak to that for a sure. moment? Sure. Um, this is one of the projects that's become most incredibly dear to my heart and didn't see it coming, and it was like a tsunami. Um, Rona, I think, was the instigator of this. We were sitting around talking about what we wanted to work on. It wasn't you, and it was and uh, I thought it was you that said, "Can we do anything for the migrants?" Oh, yeah, I did. You did, and we all said, "Yes." And then Ruthie said, I know someone who's doing a thing called Little Mercy. She's collecting backpacks for the migrant children on the Mexican side, and we were on it. And I think we started in the middle of July, assuming that by the end of September, we'd have some backpacks. By September 15th, we had over 400 backpacks filled with all these things for children who have, according to Lulu, who is a social worker in Mexico, nothing, nada. So this was amazing. And I still have a garage filled from floor to ceiling, as do I think half of our group, with more things to bring down. And now I'd like to make a plug. We are desperate for transportation <laughs> to get the, the rest of these goods down to San Diego. So if anybody would like to uh, help with transportation, please contact me. Is it okay if I do this? Sure. Uh, Bonnie Berg, mm -hmm. Bonnie Berg, 63 at Gmail. Thank you. Um, it sounds like this is an entirely volunteer-run organization. Is that right? It Absolutely. Is. So a lot of people um, I know are overwhelmed with the state of the world right now and all of the chaos and asking people to do more or give of their very little free time seems overwhelming to many people, but that is not how you're talking about no. it. Um, how do you find the time to do this kind of work and what does it give you? <laughs> If I can speak to that, I would say that it doesn't take a lot of time to, you know, spend a few hours maybe on a Sunday or whatever fits into your schedule to help in any number of ways, whether it's baking cookies for people who work on Christmas Day or making lap pads for people who've been through sexual trafficking. Just spend a few hours to do something that gives you so much back. It makes you want to do more. With mm -hmm. the little time you have, it just sparks a feeling inside you that giving back really is also giving to yourself and to other, giving to other people around you. Mm. It's been pretty amazing. I might add to that too and say that we have been just so pleasantly surprised that whenever we seem to need a little, you know, someone shows up. 
and there's this sense of abundance in the world and as Rona said it's not that you have to do everything and it's that old adage um, many hands make light work and so we all support each other and others show up to fill in any gap that we find that we might need it's just been somewhat serendipitous the way it's all worked out. Mm-hmm. So I just want to make it clear too, we are open to anybody and everybody who would like to help out. It's amazing. All are welcome. I want to change the, the operant word. It's not work. Yes. It's a how do you have time in your life to play? Well, hopefully all of us make some time. That's what this is. It's just extended play. Um, it, the, the most wonderful advances that I think we've found with the brain is understanding that Kindness, compassion, abundance, love, all of these words are all connected to neurochemistry. And when you experience that, you actually get this lovely warm bath of, of hormones that literally are like a, a, a bath that just open up the channels of feeling good. And the thing about the acts of kindness is that not only the recipients, but the givers get it. And and that, I think, is why we're all sitting here with these silly smiles on our face, nodding at each other, <laughs> because it's been uh, as close to, uh, I feel like I'm selling an object. For 1995, you too can experience the miracle <laughs> <laughs> of feeling good by doing good. Actually, it's free. <laughs> it is even better if you call right now. Right. And all of our activities are free. Yes, which exactly. is um, you know something we open them up to the public and who comes comes and um, we've been really fortunate to have community um, organizations such as Prosperity Pie Shop and the Windermere mm. um, Realty Trust al- allow us to use their spaces for the community activities. And um, libraries have come through for us to host bins. And uh, we've just been so fortunate to have the community support our efforts. How do you decide what to work on? I mean, there's so many different things you could work on. How have you chosen the projects that you're focused on right now? I think we, we meet on a quarterly basis, mm-hmm. just as whoever wants to show up to a quarterly meeting. And we talk about what's important to us and what we want to do. and. It just it kind of flows from there. Everybody brings their ideas and their thoughts and what's close to their hearts, and it, it works. Then we all pull together and make it happen. <laughs> and it also has to do with what's going on also uh, in a timely fashion. For example, last January, we were um, just um, saddened to know that a lot of our fellow neighbors um, who were working um, in the um, at PDX were furloughed and um, were having some difficulties. So we just said, hey, wow, we can do something about this. And so we um, had collections for um, just all kinds of products that they might use to help fill the gap until their paychecks started coming back. And um, it was just a a wonderful um, opportunity for us to quickly turn something around and be able to have the community support our neighbors who were hurting at that again, particular we were time. Flooded. I think we made daily trips to the airport to drop things off. And again, everybody thanks us. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to help other people. So it doesn't feel like an imposition. It is really an opportunity, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. We also find that organizations um, are in, we, we, we don't create something out of nothing on a normal basis because there are a lot of other organizations out there doing amazing work. Um, for example, the um, Giving Connection are the ones we've connected with to make these wonderful therapeutic lap pads and neck wraps for the survivors of sexual trafficking. So we amplify basically the kindness um, of other organizations as well when we could lend a hand in that capacity. So sometimes you work with or other organizations then. You, you Definitely. add volunteers to their projects. That's correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It seems that being a grassroots organization is somewhat helpful for being able to be responsive to the community's needs that if you were part of a, I don't know, 501c30, maybe you wouldn't ha- be able to respond so immediately to what you perceive to be a need. Well, it's interesting you mentioned that because we are working right now to become a 501c30. <laughs> <laughs> it, in part so that we can accept people want to donate funds to us, and we are not able to do that at this time. So 
that's one of the reasons so people can deduct their donations and we can just grow and be more of an organized group. Interesting. It will be interesting to see how we handle growth because right now I think one of the reasons it works so well is we're so few. So what are we, seven, eight in the seven or eight people? In, in, the, the, core. in the core group. But I suspect we will grow and that will be an interesting challenge. And we had, there are so many people who've been involved even in so many different ways. When I think of the number of times I emptied the bin at Garden Home Library and how many people made incredible donations of items for the migrant children, I was totally blown away. The bin would be filled up to overflowing more than once a week, and it was so incredible. And I want to thank everybody who helped us make those collections and get those things down to the migrant children. Could you talk a little bit about some of the other projects that you've worked on this year or that you are working on now? Oh, we really do <laughs> want to plug Amplify Kindness PDX, and um, it's coming up this Sunday. It's going to be held at the Middleman Jewish Community Center, and it's going to start at 1 o'clock. And um, this is um, an opportunity for us to really take this feel-good um, um, opportunity out through for all of PDX, and we're hoping that um, people will join us. Um, and maybe Rona and um, could talk a little bit about um, about what's going to happen at Amplify Kindness. So at this Amplify Kindness event, we will have many opportunities to make items to give away, either anonymously or not. Things like painted rocks. Some will be painted already. Some you can do on your own. There will be crocheted hearts. There will be felt heart pockets that people can embellish and put a note inside. There'll be bookmarks that you can make to write a little note on to attach somewhere. And all these things can be left either on a doorstep or a driveway or a desk for somebody to to make somebody's day, to make them feel good about being a person in this world and to spread kindness to other people in a way that just hopefully will make them feel good and want to continue to spread it on onward. Yeah, and I might actually just um, give you a little background about it. Um, this Amplify Kindness event is um, basically another bigger version of something that happened in, uh, on a small scale. Our um, One of our main founders, Sally Cohen, had this brainstorm um, after there were a number of shootings last fall, back to back. A year and ago. We were all feeling mm -hmm. very distraught and unmoored. And one morning, a number of us woke up to go out and get our newspaper and find a rose sitting in our driveway with a message of kindness attached to it that just made us feel so connected to our community and made us stop in our tracks and just put a smile on our face. And we felt so good about it that we all ended up saying, we want to do the same thing to our neighbors. And a number of us did. And we had one of um, our members who told the story of having left a rose with a message on a neighbor's doorstep. And you know she didn't see this neighbor too often. And he came out one uh, morning afterwards and said, Karen, Karen, did you get a rose on your step? <laughs> this just made my wife's day. She never leaves the house. And she just could not get over that someone had left her a beautiful rose yeah. with a message of kindness. We don't know what's going on with our neighbors in a lot of cases, and this connected us <laughs> in a way that you know we might not have had. And and that's what this is all about. It's about us making sure that no one slips through the cracks. And you know, we don't know who's going to need that little message of kindness in that particular day. And so we're just giving people an opportunity to make these kind of events and then go out and just put them in sp spaces where others might find them and just bring a smile to their day. I'd like to add this is open to families, children of all ages, everybody. Again, it's free. We have two wonderful speakers coming to speak for very few minutes, five minutes, ten minutes on kindness. One is Jan Elfers of the Ecumenical Ministries. She's a remarkable healing human, and the other is uh, Senator Elizabeth Steiner Hayward. And we really hope everyone comes, because you'll feel really good when you leave. 
It's a chance to meet people, make items of kindness, listen to good speakers. We'll have a photo booth. There will be a plarn mat, which is a plastic yarn mat. We make these for homeless people to put underneath themselves or their things, and people can work on that. And there'll be lots of opportunities to have a good time and spread some kindness around the world. Can you tell me where it is again and the time? It's at the Middleman Jewish Community Center. There's lots of good parking. It's off of Capitol Highway in southwest Portland. And the time is 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock. We ask that you show up at 1 o'clock. You do need to RSVP, though. And um, we ask that the RSVPs go to positivechargepdx.org. And this is on October 27th, this Sunday. This Sunday. Okay, great. Thanks so much. I'm curious. Some people say that feeling good doesn't change the world or that kindness isn't enough. We need some more structural change. What would you say to that? Absolutely. We need both. (laughs) This is what we do. <laughs> it feels really good. And, I and go say, this is a start. It's a start to make people feel kind towards each other and sh- give tokens to each other. And it's a place to start from there. People need to build on it. I also think it takes one person at a time. If we change one person's day, that has ripple effect. That <laughs> uh, we will never be able to. Um, ad- ad- understand or address um, or count but it does make the world different there are ripples there are patterns and um, we know that and science knows that and I think that um, when people come in and enjoy the community that they will find and build by being a part of something bigger than themselves it shifts the world in ways that we won't be able to um, put into words. We've certainly seen how hatred and cruelty and division has reverberated in the world and the effects that that has had on our world. People say that love, kindness, and compassion is more powerful than hate. Do you agree with that? Do we have any evidence that's true? We're all still alive as a species. We may not be very long, but so far, you know. I also think that um, there is science that says that, um, you know, the the negativity bias in humans is really strong, and it had to be in order for us to survive. And so what you need to do, what science tells us, is to have I think it's five or so positive experiences to negate a negative one and so that means that you need to be very intentional about building positive activities into your life and that's why we give people the opportunity to participate in an act an event like Amplify Kindness it's a way of building positivity into your life to counteract what is naturally a human instinct toward negativity. What has been the response um, by community members um, to some of the the projects that you've been working on? Whoosh! Overwhelming. (laughs) Overwhelming. Overwhelmingly wonderful. I'm always surprised at how many people give so much. Just one example in some of the backpacks that I picked up, there were these beautiful note cards written by a seemingly a mom and two children is what it looked like just saying how much they cared for the people that they were packing these backpacks for and each backpack was packed so lovingly with a, a washcloth around a toothbrush and toothpaste and a little stuffed animal toy and just looking through them it just made my heart burst out of my chest because they were so clearly packed up with love and care for people that these, this family will never know and they packed up maybe five or six of these beautiful backpacks. Mm-hmm. And I just, I could, can't imagine how, how wonderful a thing that was and how, mm-hmm. you know, what prepossessed them to do this. But I, I'm so thankful that they put so much care and love into their packages. Mm-hmm. We've it's also beautiful. had um, a good 
feedback from families. We One of the activities we've done for the past three years is we put together welcome boxes mm-hmm. for foster mm-hmm. care children, and um, we have the collection for it, and then we have an event where everyone gets to come and fill the boxes with all of the um, um, uh, um, tools and, you know, pieces of the puzzle, so to speak, that um, we've collected. And families come, and they bring their kids. And so the kids get to make these welcome boxes for other children. And parents cannot thank us enough for giving their kids opportunities to learn also how to be philanthropic and how to give back and why it's important to give back and be a part of their their community in giving back. And again, everything is is um, free or donated. And when I, this was my first year of walking in, it was held at the Windermere yeah. Realty Office. It was huge. It was so filled with items to put in these boxes for the foster kids. It was it was overwhelming. <clears throat> I actually could not even fathom how it would happen that all of this chaos would be organized at the end of four hours, and it all was. It's remarkable. Just like our backpack stuffing event, which is the first large event I had (coughs) ever attended. Uh, There must have been 40 or 50 people that came with children to help us stuff these backpacks. And we sent how many backpacks out from that one event? 400. Wow. And again, the Windermere office was full of school supplies and self-care supplies and clothing and backpacks. And we went through in a kind of a, a... assembly lines fashion with everybody walking around and stuffing each backpack with the things they needed and then piling them all up and then we got them out of the room and it was amazing how many people were involved and they loved it. We got so much positive feedback from the people who came and attended. Uh, Ruthie is uh, handling our website so I may be speaking out of turn. Do we have the video up of the children in Mexico receiving the no, cards and reading them. Okay, that will that. come. <laughs> Check our website. We've got amazing pictures that just came in this week. How do you decide what is needed? Oh, I just think that, as Rona said, we have our quarterly meetings, and we all have our pulse on the community, and we're, we've all been community activists and volunteers of other organizations in the past, and so we sort of bring it all together rather than focusing on one particular topic. That's what I think is good about this small startup, so to speak, is we see where a need is and we try to fill it. And um, our smallness allows us to be flexible in that way. So if people want to get involved in um, Positive Charge PDX, what can they do and what projects um, do you need help with coming up? I think the first step would be to find us on Facebook. Go to our PDX exclam- uh, PC, I'm sorry, Positive Charge Exclamation Point PDX on okay. Facebook and join the group and you'll see the list of things we've done in the past and things coming up. And look at our website. Yeah, For those who aren't on Facebook like me, exactly. definitely the website. <laughs> the website. And Instagram, we're on Instagram. And also, you know, I would just say um, if you go to the opportunities page on the website, you'll see the number one, um, you know, um, event coming up is our Amplify Kindness this Sunday. But we also have coming up next Sunday um, a plarn making event. So any crocheters out there who would like to learn how to use plastic yarn and make a sleeping mat for the homeless. To interject, we use plastic bags. We recycle them. And they are, they don't absorb water and they keep some warmth. And so it's an incredibly um, utilitarian thing for homeless folks to sleep on the sidewalk. Keeps bags out of the landfill and it's antibacterial and it keeps a little bit of cushiness and warmth off the sidewalks. After that then too, a Sunday after that, we're going to be um, decorating placemats for the Meals on Wheels people. And, um, you know, they'll be Thanksgiving themed and um, it will be just a delightful little uh, get together, just (laughs) pulling our um, our inner children's artists out of us. (laughs) And um, so we have that listed on the website. And And that's because people get the meals, but they don't often get a greeting or anything personal to go with the meal. Right. So it's sort of like getting together and having a little quilting bee where we're just doing art together. (laughs) Sounds great. (laughs) Great. So, oh, can I add one more thing? Excuse me. We also, on a regular basis, deliver Hmm. the um, 
extra extra baked goods from Safeway on Barber Boulevard to Urban Gleaners. We also have that opportunity listed on our website. We're we've just opened up the 2020 calendar, so we do this once a month. We join other organizations in doing that. So we're looking for drivers for just a two hour on a Saturday morning, the first Saturday of the month, to take on that responsibility. So it isn't a big job, but it's a very gratifying job.